I go to amusement parks to have fun, and my favorite rides are usually roller coasters. I will ride my favorites over and over again, but unfortunately, there are some genuinely awful roller coasters out there. Some are bad concepts, some are terrible designs, and some are just poorly maintained. In this video, I will rank the 25 worst roller coasters I have personally ridden, past or present. Before starting this list, I want to note that I am going to avoid listing kiddie coasters if they're simply boring because I know I'm not the target audience. I will include kiddie coasters if they're exceedingly painful. I also will be including a pain meter with each ride to let you know where each of these rides will hurt you, because they all will hurt you. Number 25, Crazy Mice That Do Not Spin. These rides are awful for two reasons. One, they take away the main selling point of the ride. Two, removing the spin adds some serious discomfort. This makes the laterals unpleasant in the second half. Usually I like laterals, but the issue here is that the vehicle is curved towards you, so your shoulders and head can bash into the vehicle, rather than your side taking the impact as with most rides. Number 24, Canyon Blaster Great Escape. This Arrow Mine Train originally opened at Opryland, and the layout made more sense there when it was in the woods. Now it's in a field, but the park has planted some trees at least. But the biggest issue is the layout. Most of this ride does nothing. The only time you build up speed is the giant helix at the end, but that element jackhammers the train, and it's quite easy to smack your legs into the side of the U-shaped harness. Number 23, the Viking Roller Coaster at Energylandia. This is a larger spinning wild mouse that inexplicably operates with over-the-shoulder restraints. This causes headbanging on the laterals in the first half, and some painful moments in the final few directional changes. Number 22, Olin Dees Volante at Magic Land. I usually like these Vacoma mine trains, and this one looked great with all the theming, but this thing did not ride well. The trains were hard with zero padding. This made the constant rattle and sudden lateral jolts very unpleasant. Number 21, Jungle Mouse at Hamanako Pal Pal. This is a small, slow, and plodding wild mouse from Sansei Technologies. It has no forces whatsoever, but to make matters worse, it feels like it has square wheels, so your back and bum will bang repeatedly. This thing rumbles down the track like a shopping cart on an unpaved parking lot. Just take a listen to it. Jesus! Oh my god! Number 20, Volda Care at Park Asterix. This is a rare Zier Hornet. For much of the layout, it is a boring but comfortable family coaster, but the finale is absolute torture. The last few breaks bring the train to a full and abrupt stop, and you're sitting in line with a T-bar harness. So when that full stop happens, your groin will take a beating, and you will become a soprano. Number 19, Nightmare Crack Axle Canyon at the Great Escape. This was an indoor Schwarzkopf Jetstar, but this one had a bevy of issues. One, it had been relocated several times and was quite rough by this point. Two, the darkened environment made it hard to anticipate the low turns, meaning you could slam into the side of the vehicle. Three, the building had no air conditioning or ventilation, so it was an absolute furnace on a summer day. Number 18, Goliath at Six Flags New England. This Vacoma giant inverted boomerang was once a good ride when it operated with the original Vacoma trains. But to improve the loading procedure, the park added trains from Premier rides. This was a curious decision because Premier had never made an inverted coaster. And the new trains were awful. They had bulky over the shoulder restraints, so headbanging was inevitable. This was particularly unpleasant given this ride's extreme intensity. But that's not all. The restraints would tighten against your thighs in the valleys, and the final stop in the spike could bash your nuts. The reason this isn't higher is because that initial drop was excellent, and the one redeeming moment. Number 17, the old Vacoma suspended family coasters. It was cruel to design a ride this rough for kids. The ride was tame in terms of forces, but these tracked as poorly as the larger SLCs. So when combined with the tight over-the-shoulder restraints, it was a bad combination. 
Some of the newer ones got wider restraints that mitigated the headbanging, but they were still rough rides. Number 16, Chance Toboggans. This ride looked like a torture chamber as guests were enclosed in claustrophobic cages, and the heads of most adults will be touching the ceiling. So when you get airtime in the final few drops, you can easily smash your head. And it's not a light tap either. It is a violent slam. I can mitigate this by leaning forwards, but I always ride these in dread. And if you fail to slouch, you will pay dearly. Number 15. Orient Express at Palace Playland. Now it's time for the awful kitty coasters. This wisdom creation is a tight squeeze for adults, and it has multiple bad jolts on the track. Number 14, Ride Your Dragon at Reithhofer Shows. This is another wisdom kitty coaster. This one is jolty as well, but this one puts the helix in the middle. Since you have more speed through it, it is even more unpleasant. Number 13, Range at Yesterland Farm. This Herschel Little Dipper looks sounds, and rides like a death trap. The turns are brutal, and the trains do not help one bit. The seats and sides are entirely metal, with absolutely no padding, so you feel every imperfection on this one. Number 12, Tiger Express at the Washington State Fair. This is yet another Wisdom Kitty coaster. This one had a longer cycle in the past three rides combined. I could not believe how many laps this ride offered, and it was bumpy and jolty, making it a brutal experience. Number 11, Apocalypse at Six Flags America. This was B&M's first coaster. This stand-up had awful tracking, making the directional changes painful in those stand-up trains. You'd get a lot of headbanging and possibly some nut pain. This was the one stand-up coaster where I could never find a technique to make the experience enjoyable. It was simply too rough. The conversion to a floorless coaster helped this ride significantly, so now it's decently enjoyable as Firebird. Number 10, Mean Streak at Cedar Point. This monstrous wood coaster from Din opened a rave reviews, but it got rough over time. The park eventually added trims to tame it. This hurt the ride's speed and forces. In front, this ride was actually fine in the end, and it was sort of fun cruising through the dense wood structure. It just didn't have much force to it. But this ride was atrocious in the back row. I was bouncing and shaking throughout, and this was a very long ride. Number 9, Coaster Express at Parque Warner Madrid. I previously made a video calling this the world's worst coaster. It was recently retracted, so the experience improved ever so slightly. It went from a 0 to a 1 out of 10. This RCCA wood coaster is still rough though. Your legs will smack against the T-bar repeatedly, and the layout is stupid. It just consists of these big swooping drops and turns devoid of any forces, and this is another one where the long experience works to its disadvantage. Number 8, Wildcat at Lake Compounds. This PTC wood coaster is a classic, but it's an awful ride at this time. The layout is fairly mild. The ride was never smooth, but it became way rougher after the 2017 retrack. The ride was absolutely butchered. The new Millennium Flyer trains violently jackhammer on the low points. You are tossed around like a rag doll, and your legs will painfully bash into the center column on the restraint. The park is having Gravity Group retrack parts of it for the 2024 season, so it should run better going forwards. Number 7, Hellcat at Clementon Park. This SNS wood coaster is a great layout designed by Alan Schilke, but it became extremely rough. The park tried adding a trim break to the first drop, but the ride is still brutal, and now the once plentiful airtime has been severely dampened. This ride is admittedly tolerable in the front row, but my back row ride a few years ago was a painful jackhammering mess start to finish. It is one of the worst single rides I've had in any coaster. It is so bad that the park no longer even allows guests to ride in the back two cars. Number 6. RC48 at Wade Shows. This Pinfari creation does so many things wrong. You have hard seats, so the bumpy valleys will hurt your butt. You have over the shoulder harnesses, so any directional changes will cause you to hit your head, and they're hard restraints too. And you have a hard stop at the end, 
that caused my knee to smack the metal grab bar in front of me. This was a gauntlet of pain. Number 5. Coast Rider at Knott's Berry Farm Most mock wild mice are enjoyable, but this one became awful with a restraint modification. After an incident, these awkward shin guards were added, and they were not meant to be on this ride originally. So your legs will be stapled because of where they were placed. There is no clearance for any adult, and it is brutal. The pressure on your shins is unbearable, and it ruins the whole experience. Number 4. Vacoma Suspended Looping Coasters with the Old Restraints On paper, these Vacoma inverts should be great rides. They are fast-paced with 5 inversions, and the newer ones with improved tracking and vest restraints are enjoyable. But the old ones are abominations. They track poorly, which is a bad combination with the layout this wild. The rides had bulky over-the-shoulder restraints close to your ears. While there was some foam padding, it was still headache-inducing. Some of the worst ones include Flight Deck at Canada's Wonderland, Iron Claw at Movie Park Germany, and Mind Eraser at Six Flags America. Number 3. Rainier Rush at Washington State Fair This was a compact and janky coaster with awful trains. The cars were cramped. The over-the-shoulder restraints hugged your ears to induce headbanging, and there was a lot of it given how bad this ride's transitions were. Then this ride had a good but awful airtime hill. What do I mean by that? There was this off-axis hill with some genuinely good airtime, but there was a metal grab bar positioned just above your knees, so it felt like someone took a mallet to my kneecap whenever you went airborne. Number 2. Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom Skyline's first ever coaster was atrocious. This was a loud and uncomfortable Skywarp model. The layout was not anything special, but worst of all, the train shook ferociously. This was a major problem given the bulky over-the-shoulder restraints. Headbanging was plentiful. This was especially bad in a layout this disorienting, especially when you were going backwards. And coming in number one is Blue Tornado at Gardaland. Take everything I said about the prior SLCs, but add an additional helix at the end, and remove the foam padding. The second I sat down, I knew I was in for a bad time. Experiencing a ride this rough with hard restraints was downright brutal. My head was throbbing after this coaster, and was tenfold worse than a standard SLC. I don't know why they changed the restraints here, but it was a really bad decision. So those are my 25 least favorite roller coasters in the world. What are your least favorite coasters, or thoughts on any of the ones I mentioned? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.